Hello and welcome back to the Ten Born. I'm Pragmatic Lee. Uh, recently, uh, I had an opportunity to pick up a tripod. Uh, I've got several tripods I use around here, uh, video and in the Ten Born. Uh, but this one is pretty much a beast. This is a Bojan, uh, made in Italy, made in Italy, Manfrotto uh, tripod. It's cast aluminum, uh, nice head here. You're not, these are not friction uh, turns here. These are on bearing surfaces, uh, tilting. Uh, very nice tripod. But as is the case, many times when you come across a uh, uh, used tripod at a yard sale or flea market or auction it's always missing one thing and that's the camera shoe uh, and that's what's missing on this <clears throat> along with another piece let me get you zoomed in just a little bit and i'll show you what we're going to be making today the original camera shoe uh, for this tripod is was a hexagon shape and they're still available. I can buy it online for $27.99 plus about $8 shipping. Uh, I'm sure there'd be some tax on it. So I'd probably have uh, $40 in it by the time I got it. I think we can make something that'll work just as well. I could go ahead and make the full hex gun. Uh, let's see, I cut one out of, this is not a uh, cardboard aided design. This is a uh, paper aided design. get my edges lined up here. So the hexagon, hexagon would fit in there as such and it could have been turned uh, six different positions. However, I never really saw, could never really see the benefit of that when all you got to do is rotate the camera, rotate the tripod. So what we're going to make today is just a uh, three sides of the hexagon that will fit in and the way this works this lever will pull back out to this side you'll push the shoe in there and that'll push down a little pin over here and when you push that pin down this locks into place so that's the first thing we're going to work on uh, i've got a piece of uh, these were two and nine sixteenths across the flats uh, I've got a piece of three inch uh, by three eighths inch thick uh, aluminum here and I've, as you can see I've already got uh, the angles laid out. I'll carry that over to the bandsaw but we'll, we'll bandsaw that out and then come back to the mill and get it, uh, the angles perfected on there. But we'll work on this on the tripod or on the shoe. Also for the shoe, we'll need the bolt or the screw that goes through this to attach the camera. So that'll be another part of this project. And the other thing that was missing with this tripod is this handle. Uh, it should have had a handle out about probably 24 inches with a articulating joint in the middle. So we're going to build one of those as well. Uh, I suspect very few of you will ever have the uh, need to build a, uh, to make a camera shoe for a tripod or a handle. Uh, you might, because there's some good deals out to be had at flea markets and auctions on tripods that are missing these pieces. But uh, I hope you'll stick around for this video because there's going to be considerable mean machining in it. Uh, these are 60 degree dovetails in here. We'll be using the Randy Richards, uh, uh, Randy Richard in the shop, uh, dovetail cutters, probably use a small one for this job uh, to take the edge off or to create a dovetail on that aluminum. So I'm going to go over to the bandsaw. Uh, I won't try to video that, but I'm going to cut this off, just these two points right here, and then meet back at the, uh, at the mill. I'm leaving it the full length for now until I get these fitted in 
and then we'll decide on the exact length to cut it off. All right, I've got the corners nipped off now with the bandsaw. Got it set up on the mill. I've got it on a 30 degree uh, angle block under here and got the, got the vise good and tight. So I'm just going to work down to my scribe line. And on this side, I didn't leave a whole lot with, for the uh, didn't leave a whole lot on the bandsaw. Uh, a few more thousands to go. Like I said I didn't leave a didn't leave a whole lot on the bandsaw on this side. Just cleaning off any burrs now. Alright, and I've got my protractor set to 30 degrees. That looks dead on the money. Alright, now I'm going to flip it over. We'll do the other side. seem to be following my angle this time be sure I got it no I didn't all right I went back I was having a little issue getting the angle block in there and sure enough I had a chip underneath it so I've got that cleaned out and ready to go now that's following the line much better now all right let me check that and then I think we'll be ready to decide how I'm going to set up to cut the dovetails. Again, that might be half a degree off, but I think that's plenty good for a camera shoe. So again, I'm going to get decided how I'm going to set up to cut this, uh, uh, cut this dovetail on this side, and then we'll be right back. All right, I think I'm set up on the uh, mill now, ready to start with the dovetail. Uh, you may not can see it in frame, but I've actually got the vise mounted on the swivel base. I've had this mill for four years and two months now, and I think this might be the second time I've ever used a swivel base uh, on this vise or use it with the vise. But in any case, I've got it mounted up here, and I've got it swung at, uh, you know, 30 degrees. And what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to show you, I've got light over here on it now. Hopefully you can see the indicator. And there's some noise on this edge right here. But overall, in moving that to length from one end to the other, the noise is maybe a thousandth on each side, but it's staying on zero from one end to the other. So I feel confident I've got it set at the uh, proper angle now. I'm going to take the uh, dial indicator off and a dial test indicator off and put the dovetail cutter in. And we're going to take off this bottom edge just to the point that we leave, leave maybe about 50 thousandths flat on this edge right here. So let me get the dovetail cutter set up and I'll be right back. All right, I'm set up now and I don't know how well to trust this this whole setup, so I'm going to take small cuts at the time. I don't know that I've ever cut uh, dovetails in aluminum with these cutters, but it, it should work fine. Randy says to give them plenty of RPMs. Uh, I'm going to start out at about 1120 RPMs. Uh, that's what uh, the gear settings on this lathe indi indicate. So I'm going to always cut moving the table in this direction. Since this turns clockwise, That'll have me conventional milling the whole time. I won't try to do any climb milling with, with this setup.
I think I'm going to stop right there. Uh, if I needed more depth, I can go with the, the larger cutter. Right now, I have the top edge of my workpiece with the top edge of, the, of this dovetail cutter. And you know, that's, let me look at the tripod again. Tripod's got a pretty sharp corner in there. So I think I'm going to change out, put the larger dovetail cutter in so I can cut a little bit more height. Uh, if I try to raise this or if I try to carry it in any further, uh, I don't believe I can get any thicker cut with this. This is probably the maximum uh, for, uh, for this size dovetail cutter. It's probably a five sixteenths to, to maybe to three eighths. I'm going to go to a little larger size and be right back. Okay, I don't necessarily want this flat that's left right here to be a knife edge by any means. But I'd love to have it. That's probably about 50 thousandths there, maybe 75. I'd like to have it about half that size. So I'm going to take a little more off. Come on, Cameron, focus. All right, that looks a little better. I, I'm liking that edge. I believe it'll fit. I believe it'll fit okay. All right, I saw the camera lose focus, but I didn't really want to let go because what happens when you let go, you get what's called a dwell cut. I did not want to dwell on a, uh, on a spot. But I like that really, really good. I, I like that edge right there. So I'm going to get this turned around, set up to do the other side, uh, and then we'll do a dry fit on the tripod itself. All right, I got the two dovetails cut on this end. So we'll carry this over to the tripod now and give it a dry fit. And from that, try to determine uh, where we need to cut it off in length. Okay, I've got the locking mechanism out of the way now. We'll test fit our piece in here. Dovetails at a good angle. I'm going to scratch a line right here at the end. And the length, the overall length needs to be to where it will just, just set on this pin when it's locked down. So I'm going to measure this, this scribe mark I have over here now is at the edge of the pin. So I'm going to go just a little bit bold on it. So from that scribe line to the one we just made is 2.541. 2.541. And let's see, I want to add about probably 50 thousandths to that. So 2.591. I'm going to make it 2.6, the overall length. So what I've got to do now back over on the mill is uh, get that uh, base back off. I don't need that uh, swivel base for the vise anymore and get the vise trammed back in because the uh, what we'll be doing on this will be perpendicular to the vise jaws. Carried the piece over to the bandsaw and uh, made a cut. Tried to leave enough Leave a little extra this time. Uh, cut it kind of close on, on one of these sides on the bandsaw before. But I'm going to do a cleanup pass and then take a measurement and then we'll work it down to our, uh, uh, to our de design. Of course, a little bit of WD-40 on aluminum 
keeps the uh, chips from sticking to the uh, to the cutter. All right, I'm going to zero out the x-axis right there, and we'll take a measurement. It's 2.683. We want 2.6, so I need 83 thousandths. That was 40. All right, this will be a total of 75, and then we'll get a, another measurement. Point six oh four, so need four more thousands. Pretty hot chips coming off of there, right onto my hand. All right, I'm going to take this over to the uh, tripod right quick and give it a uh, another quick fit test and if that's if that's what it needs to be we'll move on to the next step of drilling and tapping our center hole okay guys the shoe fits wonderfully in the uh, uh, in the tripod as I've said before I don't use the word perfect very often in my videos uh, because I don't very often do stuff that's perfect but that's, this is, fits about as close to perfect as I could ask for. I'll show you that a little later in the video. But what I want to do right now is drill and tap this for a quarter 20. A quarter 20 is what screws into the, uh, the bottom of a camera. Uh, I've got three cameras that I use out here in the uh, tin barn. One of them is what I'm recording with right now. Another one of them is loaned to our youth director at the uh, at our church so she can record uh, messages uh, lessons for the children uh, during this time of uh, shutdown with the COVID-19 so she's she's using one of the cameras the third camera is at the church as well I left it there yesterday as we're getting ready to start doing outside services and I was going to use that camera there so I don't have another camera to show you all this, but I do have one of these universal mounts that comes with the GoPros, uh, which has the same thread, the same type mounting mechanism. What my plan is, is to drill and tap this for a quarter 20, then take a quarter, quarter 20 socket head cap screw, put it in the lathe, and turn some relief on the inside between the head and the threads. That way it'll thread up in there, but then be able to turn freely uh, in this place where we uh, turn some relief. Also in this video, I plan to, to make a knob to press this socket head into, so a, a thumb type knob. But for right now, let's get this drilled and tapped. 
and this is I'm doing this in the center because that's there's a large hole in the whoop, large hole in the uh, mount on the tripod that the uh, that the thumb screw can be accessed through. All right, that was simple enough. I'm gonna get set up now to uh, make the little uh, head, the thumb screw portion that we're gonna press on uh, to this socket head cap screw. All right, I've got our socket head cap screw loaded in a collet now in the block. And I'm going to mount that in the chuck. And folks, I know I'm getting old, but I got to looking for this after the last segment, this screw, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, I finally gave up on it and said, well, I'll go to my uh, screw bin, get another one out. Well, I didn't have another one this length. I uh, didn't have another one this style, actually, except very short ones. So I literally took the SIM card out of the camera here, put it in the computer, played that last segment back to see what happened to this screw. And as you saw in that last segment, or in, uh, in that last segment, I pinpointed that. And I went right to it and found it then. But what I've done here on the shoe, I've used a gauge pin, and 193 thousandths will clear that fine and not have a whole lot of slack. So what I'm going to do is turn about a half inch of this thread here, uh, no more than a half inch, probably a little over three-eighths of that thread down to 193 thousandths. That way it'll thread into the shoe and then will turn freely. So I'm probably going to have to do this with a parting tool. All right, here's my parting tool. Get that loaded in the lathe. I want to come up to that shoulder. And I'm going to take about 7 sixteenths, which is 438 thousandths. The uh, parting tool width is 92 thousandths, so that leaves 346 thousandths. So I'll zero out the z-axis. Come over 300, what did I say? 346 thousandths. And that is right on the edge of, of what I have uh, sticking out. So I'm going to put just a little mark right there. I have to be very careful doing it, putting any side pressure on this parting tool. Now let's get a quick measurement. Remember, we want no more than 193 thousandths. That's 177. So that should be just fine. That's got the threads cleared off. I should have enough distance there to go through. Whoops. Got the dropsies today. Go through the shoe and maybe even have a little washer. So now we're going to turn back to the mill. And we're going to make a thumb head to go on this. In case I lost you in that portion, here's, here's what we're doing. Remember, a quarter 20 hole in the uh, drill and tap in the shoe. Quarter 20 bolt. We thread that in. So once it passes the threads on this side, now it can free spin. And we got room for a washer there should, should we need one, which we will. In the end, we'll wind up uh, taking off just about all of this, except for maybe about a quarter of an inch of thread left over. I got a piece of inch and three sixteenths uh, round stock uh, in the mill now. The head on our socket head cap screw is three eighths. So I'm going to drop down a 60 force to 23 60 force, drill a hole in this, and that will be a hole that this will press fit into, hopefully. 
Let's, I've already found center. The depth we want to go, I know I'm going to have a little waste on this piece, but we want to go at least a quarter of an inch. Now, if you didn't know this, and you don't learn anything else from this video, uh, take note of this. Socket head cap screws, imperial and metric, the thickness of the head is always the same thing as the diameter of the threads. Quarter inch, the thickness will be a quarter inch. So if you need to countersink this, uh, you don't have to measure it just, or you don't have to determine what it is. It, uh, the depth of the head will always be the width of the threads. And I'm going a little extra here. I'm going to go instead of 250 thousandths, I'm going to go 350 thousandths. Now when the time comes, that head, it's actually going to be a tight press fit in there. But uh, I believe with the aluminum it'll go in. So now I'm going to get set up on the DRO and we're going to drill, set up a bolt hole pattern, the same thing as the rim out here, so that when we mill in our slots or our thumb tabs we'll be cutting half the width of this uh, end mill into the material okay a lot of times when i'm doing bolt hole patterns i like to set one camera up on the uh, dro and then one on the work down here but like i say i've only got one camera left in the tin barn right now so i've got the camera swung over onto the uh, bolt hole onto the dro and I'm going to show you how I lay out this bolt hole pattern. All right, so I'm on zero. I'm right where I was where I drilled my material. So zero, I hit the bolt hole pattern button, and we're dealing with X, Y. If you were on a horizontal mill instead of a vertical mill, you would be dealing with X, Z or Y, Z. We're dealing with X, Y here, so enter. We're starting at the center. Our diameter is, I remember I said the piece in the uh, vise was inch and three sixteenths. That's 1.188. Enter. Number of holes, I'm going to put eight. Enter. Starting angle zero. Ending angle 360. We want our eight holes spread around the full diameter. So for hole number one, it will tell me to move the x-axis to 0.594. If I go to hole number two, 420 and 420 on the y, and all the way around until we have completed our bolt hole pattern. So I'm going to get the camera set back up on the work down here and you can see what we're doing. All right, the end mill I'm going to be using, I decided to go with a ball end mill uh, just simply to make that transition because we're going to be cutting these, these holes right on the edge. The end mill should be uh, centered on the edge. Now remember the first one said to go bring the x-axis, was it 594, so bring it down to zero. And that's going to be about zero on the Z. Again, I want to just be sure I go down a quarter of an inch at least. And as I get further in this bolt hole pattern, you'll be able to see more of what's going on. All right, I go to hole two on my DRO. And bring both axes to zero. Hole number three. And I'm going to continue, just work around. I'll come back when you can. And you can see a little better of what's happening on this other side. I'm 
should be able to begin to see what's happening now. And <clears throat> again, each time I advance the DRO to the next hole position, I simply bring the, I move the table until the X and Y axis both reach zero. So there's eight holes, or eight half a holes. So there's what our thumb knob is going to look like. Now I'm going to, before I part this off, I'm going to carry this into the dirty side of the tin barn to the wire wheel that's on the grinder or on the buffer in there and clean up all these uh, burrs, shine that up a little bit. Then I'm going to go back to the lathe and part this off at a quarter inch length. Then I'll meet you guys back over at the press and we'll press this onto our socket head cap screw. Okay, instead of moving the camera all the way around to the other side of the tin barn where the hydraulic press is, I think I'm just going to try this in the, uh, in the vise, see if I can press it in there straight. But this is our, our thumb wheel. And this, of course, is our socket head cap screw. I'm going Start that with the soft blow hammer. See if I can. We may wind up at the press, but we're going to try this. Whether you're at the vise or at the press or, or wherever. Got to try to keep it straight. And that's not starting straight, so I'm going to back up and start over. Alright, I don't think I'm going to be able to get quite enough pressure on the, uh, on the vise. I'm just going to turn around to the hydraulic press and press that in there. I think y'all have seen pressing enough that I don't necessarily need to pull the camera around. All right, the camera screw is pressed in now. That was a bit of a tight fit, uh, full 64 uh, spreading in 3 8 Normal rule of thumb is a thousandths per, uh, per one inch. But that hydraulic press, 20 ton press, put it in there pretty good. So let's put this together. Remember, I made this space in here long enough to put a washer on, so I'll put the washer. And we'll thread it in our shoe. And remember, once it gets to that, that part that we, uh, the relief we cut on the threads, it's free spinning and doesn't fall out. And here's our pretend camera for right now. Get it oriented like you want it. Now, the camera has a spring-loaded lock on here. There's this little plunger pin right up in there that we made this just long enough to catch on. So we slide that into our dovetails, getting our fingers out of the way. Folks, like I say, I don't use the word perfect very much describing my work here in the uh, tin barn, but that's just about as close to perfect as I could. I know it's as close as I could ever come. The thumb screw is accessible in here if you needed to make minor adjustments to the direction of the uh, uh, camera. I think that's going to be enough for, the, for this video. Uh, next video, probably the next one, will make our articulating handle to come out here uh, to give tilt and pan. So, hope you've enjoyed this, seen uh, using the Randy Richard dovetail cutter. Uh, it worked. Just as good did on this 
job as, as it has on any other jobs that I've had it for. So you guys take care, and I'll see you on the next video.